Today I present to you top 10 tips, tricks, and hidden features for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. I discovered some of this recently, even after owning my Model 3 for almost two years and wanted to share with all of you. This car is amazing. I keep finding new things every day. Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about top 10 trips and tricks for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. And some of this might also work for other Tesla models. I hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy during this pandemic. This is the part three of my tips and tricks series. So if you haven't checked out the first two videos, I'm going to put a link up here down in the description as well as at the end on the end screen. So be sure to check those videos out. For those of you who watched those videos, thank you very much for your engagement, the subscriptions, likes, your feedback, comments. I really, really appreciate it. So I wanted to bring you part three of this series with valuable Tesla content. My goal in this channel is to take you right to the content, bring valuable content and no BS. I'll put a timestamp to each of these tips and tricks down below so you can skip around and just go to the tips and tricks that you think would be helpful to you. Being said that I can only keep growing, the channel can only keep growing with your continuous support. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification, hit the like button for this video so that I can continuously grow and bring you more and more valuable Tesla content in a regular basis. Thank you very much for your time. Let's get it started with today's video. This first tip is for installing your software update faster. I'm not talking about skipping through Tesla software update. What I'm talking about is being able to install your update two minutes faster. Let's take a look at what I mean by this. If you're like me, I want my software updates to be installed immediately as soon as I get them because I'm so excited about what the update will bring. And here, if I hit install now, Tesla gives me a countdown of two minutes. Tesla does this in case you need to drive your car and you won't be able to drive your car if it is doing the software update. So they give you a kind of a second thought of, are you sure you want to install this update now? If you want to skip right to the update, all you have to do is tap twice right here. And it begins the update. This is a fun Easter egg that not a lot of folks know about. When your car gets to 121 miles or 121 kilometer, either way it works, you go to your app and then press on the battery icon on your app and then the, the app screen totally changes. Now this is a reference to the movie Back to the Future. One point, 121 miles or 121 kilometer changed to 1.21 gigawatt. That is the amount of power Doc Brown needs to send his DeLorean back to the future. The things also change in the app. If you look at it, the location changes to an important filming location of this movie. It also schedules a service appointment for November 5, 1955, which is the day when Doc Brown hit his head and discovered flux capacitor. The badge of your uh, Tesla also changes to P88D Model X. That is likely a reference that the delivery needs to hit 88 miles per hour to activate the flux capacitor. The software version also changes, indicating so many other references about this movie. So it is very clever what Tesla did that next time you hit 121 miles or 121 kilometers, give it a try. It's a fun exercise. This next one is also a fun Easter egg. This next Easter egg references to Douglas Adams' science fiction comedy, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in which 42 is determined to be the ultimate answers to the life, the universe, and everything. Clever folks at Tesla hide this one under the car's name. So if I exit this, go to my car's name, if I type here, and then change the car's name to 42, what's what happens to the name out here? I'm typing 42, I hit save, it changes to life, the universe, and everything. And over here, the name changes as well. 
This next tip is the hidden auto park, but I like to call it summon where you don't need a phone app or a phone for that matter. You can activate this inside your car and what it does is literally what the basic summon does. It just puts the car front and backward, but it doesn't do a fancy auto park like what auto park does. It, you know, puts you inside the lane. This one doesn't recognize the lane. It literally just goes front and back. While you are in park, you just have to uh, first go into your auto um, pilot setting in the summon and then turn off the continuous press. So that has to be off. Once you do that, all you have to do is double tap on the gear stock and then this interface shows up where you can tap on the front or the back. So whichever way you want your car to go front, forward or backward. And then you just tap into that, you exit the car, you close the door and then car does, the, does that. And if it runs into any obstacle, it is supposed to stop like you know, a uh, basic summon does. So this could be helpful on when you don't have a phone, you're just using a key card. Uh, you, you have to have a, a full self-driving subscription for this to work or uh, the enhanced autopilot subscription for this to work. So there is some uses for this. I don't find it too useful, but in case you do, I wanted to share it with you how this works. Uh, as you see in this video, it didn't really stop for that curve. Uh, I don't know why, so I had to take over. And to take over, you just have to kind of open the door handle while the car is moving and then it stops automatically. So be careful, um, just, you know, with anything with autopilot and summon, you just have to be really, really extra careful while dealing with this thing because it's not perfect. It could hit something. So do this on your own risk. I just wanted to show you that the functionality is there if you need to. This next one is disengaging autopilot. You probably already know that you can press on the brake and then you can also slightly turn the steering wheel to disengage the autopilot. But did you know that there's an easier way to disengage the autopilot? All you have to do is what you would normally do to go reverse while the autopilot is active. So all you have to do is you just press up on the gear stock and then the autopilot disengages. Uh, I find this to be easier than you know pressing on the brakes or even shaking the steering wheel. The next tip is Joe mode. There was a guy named Joe who suggested to Elon that his babies were waking up because the chime in Tesla, for example, the autopilot chime was too loud. So Elon decided to name this whole interface as the Joe mode. To activate that, you go to the car, go to safety and security, and down here, there is Joe mode. So if I activate the Joe mode and if I look at what does that do, it is enabling Joe mode reduces the volume of your car chime. The quieter chimes continue to alert the driver effectively and minimize disruption to passengers in the rear seat. Example, Joe's kid, which is pretty clever and is really useful uh, feature. It really does reduce the, the chimes volume by a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about full screen apps. Right now, if I open up a web browser and put anything in here, it only shows on this side of the screen because this side of the screen is still reserved for your car's info. So I have been looking for a way where you can fill up the whole screen with full screen apps like how it happens when we go to entertainment and open up YouTube. So there is a way. There is this website called a bettertheater.com. You can bookmark this and to bookmark it's just pressing here and then you can name it whatever you want and then just add to favorite so that next time you click here that website will be right here but if you bookmark this website this lets you do full screen apps and the way it works is you just press here on full screen and then I think this app is using YouTube as a platform so what it tells you is are you sure you want to leave YouTube and then you just press here on go to site and then the site loads and when it loads as you can see this is all full screen so now you can go to any of your favorite sites like even your media server plex reddit there's also chrome uh, a better route planner you can do any of this so for example if i click on disney plus the login screen appears so i can log in 
and I can watch Disney Plus in full screen like how, how I would watch YouTube here using the theater. There is HBO Now, YouTube TV, Philo. There is just a lot of apps here uh, that you can use in full screen. Next, I want to talk about free supercharging. Well, you might think that this is obvious, but even my friends reach out sometimes saying they purchased a Tesla without using a referral code. It's the easiest way to save some money on supercharging. All you have to do is use somebody's referral code and both yourself and the referrer get 1000 miles of free supercharging, which is equivalent to around 400 kilowatt hour. And if you do the math, if you multiply 28 cents per kilowatt hour by 400, you get around $112. That is the easiest way to save some money during road trips using the supercharger. You don't have to use my code, but I really, really appreciate if you use my referral code. All you have to do is go to the description below. You'll find my code, click on it. It'll take you to the Tesla order page and you just order a Tesla like how you would normally do. I also want to take this time to thank you very much to everyone who have used my referral code in the past and those those miles are very precious i take road trips and it's so nice not having to pay for for supercharging while i'm on the road trip so thank you very much please continue to use my referral code and share my code with your friends and family i really appreciate it Free supercharging is not the only way you can save money on charging. There are also thousands of free charging stations around the world where you can take advantage of those chargers and charge for free. I mean, I personally have taken advantage of those at work, at whenever I'm out, if there's one nearby my house, where I have saved thousands of dollars in the last two years on charging costs by utilizing those and taking advantage of those. Uh, how it works is you just go to different websites and find where the chargers are, which chargers are nearest to your house or the businesses that you are going to be visiting, maybe near your work or even at your work. So do some research to figure out where you have those chargers. Granted that these chargers only charge, you know, around 25 to 30 miles per hour, but that might be enough to get you through the day and you can totally take advantage of this free of cost. Let me show you how you find these chargers and how you can filter to only find the free chargers in your area. To find a free charger near you, you just have to find the charging network. So if we just go, for example, if we just look at ChargePoint, okay, there are multiple networks that you can go through eVigo and whatnot and find free charging. I just find ChargePoint to be very easy to navigate. So if we go to chargepoint.com and if we go to find stations and click on that, it pulls up, you know, you can do allow location. If I just put 80013, that is in Aurora, Colorado, it pulls up this locations right here that are all the chargers that are available. So if I click here in the filter and then put available, it shows me the chargers that are available to me right now. And right here, as you can see, there is a filter called free. So if I put under price, if I put free, it only shows me free chargers. So if we click on one of them right here, City of Aurora, I live garage, right? So if I click here, this one, it says rate free, always open. How nice is that? So you can look at that and then just charge at the free one. Keep in mind, there are some that are free for a certain amount of time. So if I remove this filter and if I zoom out, I know that there is one charger here. So right here, there are eight chargers. So if I click on one of them, even though the free didn't pull up right here, it says zero dollars for the first two hours. So for, for two hours, you don't pay anything. And then from after that, you start paying. So even though it doesn't pull up by free, there might be charger near you. Just click on it and then see how many hours you can charge for free. This is also really cool because there is other filters such as you can filter by level one, you can do level two, you can even look up Tesla supercharger, and then you can even select different networks. So ChargePoint, Bling, SEMA Connect, EVgo, whatever you want. So that is how you can charge your car for free.
This is another clever Easter egg. It is the Monty Python Easter egg. I'm going to provide a little bit of background for this next fun Easter egg. It is the Foot of Cupid. Foot of Cupid is an animated foot from the BBC television series Monty Python Flying Circus. This foot is often seen in the opening animation credit and at the end of the opening, dropping down from the title and everything around it, uh, and it makes a sound of flatulence. Clever folks in Tesla have incorporated this Easter egg within your Model 3 and Model Y, and you probably didn't know about it. So if we close this out, and if we go over here, where the name, so it's my car's name. Now if I remove that to say Patsy, which, which is one of the name of the character from Monty Python Flying Circus, watch what happens. The foot of Cupid drops on your screen with that sound at the end. Now if I go over here and open the entertainment, here is a Monty Python for you where if I click on this, it takes me to the YouTube page for Monty Python. Those were the top 10 tips and tricks that I wanted to cover in today's video. I will continue to make this uh, series periodically. And as I said, if you haven't checked out the first two videos of this series, please click on the link below. I'll also put it on the end screen. If you found today's video helpful and you want to see more in the future, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, give it a thumbs up. As I said before, your continuous support, you sharing my video is the only way I can continue to grow and make more videos so that I can bring quality Tesla content in the future. I will be back with another Tesla video shortly. I thank you for your time today. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.